Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Adventure Sport LED conversion bulbs and kits. We're going to cover how to troubleshoot if you have any problems. I'll also cover which batteries you should be using and how to install the lithium ion conversion kits if you want to use those. The first couple of steps to installing any of these upgrades is, is the same for each of the bulbs, whether you're using the 370, the 800, the 5000, the 2000. Uh, the only one that's any different is the rechargeable Maglite one, and we'll cover that as well. To start out, the first thing you want to do is completely, entirely, 100% remove the head from the body so that you have you're holding them in separate pieces two different hands next you want to take this retaining ring off the bulb just unscrew that now most newer mag lights have this little uh, this little by pin bulb you get with them now uh, but there's also this adapter that's in there that we need to get out and all you got to do to get that out is push down on the switch and it'll eject that piece of plastic. I've got a switch that's out of the light so you can see better what that's going to look like. Now if you're using the Firefly 2-6 to six cell, all you got to do is thread this right on to your switch post, screw the head back on your light, and you're done. For the other conversions, that's the 800, the 5000, the 2000, We've got this head totally off our mag light, and you want to remove the bezel from the head. Take this reflector out, set it aside, we don't need that. If you're using the Adventure Sport hard glass lens, you'll want to put that in now. Now the install for the 2000 and the 5000 is the same. Just drop that in like that and screw your bezel and lens back on. You, there is a little tiny bit of a gap there, but not very much. We've got the retaining ring, all that stuff off, the, the old bulb is out. Now just screw the head back on. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And you'll feel it start to get snug. Just give it this. Don't wrench it too hard, but, but it's pretty good and snug on there. You can use some of these upgrades in a C-cell mag light. The 370 lumen you can use as is in a C-mag. The 800 lumen will not fit C-mags. It does not work in them. The 5000 and 2000 will work in your C-mag if you use this adapter ring. It does not come with it. It is purchased separately. And if you're going to use it in a C-Mag, you must have this. All you need to do is slip that over the tail cap and put this in your light and install just like the D-Cell. Uh, don't try to use it without that because you, you could put it in there and just screw the head down till the bulb was in there tight, but then you would have absolutely no heat sinking and your bulb would definitely burn up. There's how it looks installed. It does cover the O-ring, so you get a seal, but just only, you know, it only comes like an eighth of an inch past there. Don't try to force it any further. <laughs> now, if you have a really old mag light, something you want to check before ordering is this. The old mag lights, may, like, they don't have a D in the serial number usually, or, you know, some of the really old ones even do, but I have a whole other video on how to tell if your mag light is super old. It's called new mag light versus old. Okay, something that could happen to you is you drop that in and see how it sits up high like that. If your mag is super old, it's not going to fit right. It, there's that big gap. There's been a handful of mags found that like you couldn't even get the first thread on so make sure if your mag's really old you check out that other video I show you how to measure the head and make sure you got the right one if you do have an old mag you can still use the 370 lumen or the 800 lumen in most cases moving to the 800 lumen bulb now you'll notice it comes it's got this other set of rings on the bottom 
most of the time you're just going to leave that on. If you got a newer mag, you can just drop that in, put your bezel and lens on, you're good to go. See, we got a little bit of a gap there. Uh, really, if you want to eliminate even that, something you can do. This ring has a round edge on one side and a straight edge on the other. And if you take it off and flip it over, it'll sit even deeper. Boom. Now, if you're using the old mag, take that ring off, drop it in your head, this one, it sits all the way down perfect. And we get almost, almost all the way down. There have been a small handful of people who even with that ring taken off had trouble getting that to sit down all the way. Now with the 800 and then screw the head on. onto the mag charger. This is the rechargeable mag that snaps into a cradle. Uh, same thing, take the bezel off. The heads don't just come off of these, so unscrew the bezel and remove the lens, or you know, take off the bezel and the old reflector out. I, I lost my reflector, but take that out. You don't need it anymore. Uh, this head will scoot down some. Now, this bit can be tricky unless you watch this video. The mag charger has a bi-pin bulb in it also, but we're not going to take that, that housing part out of this one. But watch this. Here's the bi-pin bulb. I can spin this around and around, okay? And that's important because you may have to line up these pins to get it to sit right, okay? If, if we, this has pins in it, in the bottom just like your bi-pin bulb and there's those posts in there those brass buttons where the old reflector used to push this the bulb up and down for focus this has slots that those have to go on so very gently you just want to feel around till you've got the the pins lined up, but if this part of the bulb is hitting those brass posts, you need to reinstall your old bulb. Don't try to do it with this, you'll wreck the pins. Reinstall your old bulb and just give it a slight twist. Now that those line up, just scoot your head up. It's actually easier if you hold the bezel and turn the head. Here's a bonus tip. If your mag charger is one of the ones that has modes in it, your new LED upgrade will also. The way you get to the modes in the mag charger is you click once for high, but if you from off click twice, you get low. From off, if you click three times, you get strobe. So what battery should you be using? Uh, with the 370 lumen bulb, alkaline batteries are just fine. You will get better performance using more cells. You can tell how much by this chart. Jumping up to the 800 lumen, three alkaline D cells are, are okay. You get a little bit of a reduced output on those. Uh, four, five, six, you're getting good performance, full power from that. On the 5,000 and 2,000 lumen bulbs, in a pinch, you can get by with alkaline cells using three on the 2,000 lumen or six on the 5,000 lumen, but I don't recommend it. Best case scenario, you're going to get half output at maximum power, and you're going to nuke those in a very short amount of time. Running it on high, you get like 20 minutes of, of good light. What I recommend if you want to use regular size D cells and not lithium ion is 
Kenergy Centura. These are a nickel metal hydride cell rechargeable 1.2 volt. They're a direct replacement for regular alkaline D cells. If you're using three alkaline Ds, you would get three of these. Uh, I say the Tenergy Centura. There are other good nickel metal batteries. I like these because I've load tested them myself and I know they can carry a, a six, seven, eight amp load like you need for the high power uh, adventure sport conversions. Um, Amazon Basics actually are pretty good. They're like they're good for the price. They actually have a, a genuinely little bit higher capacity. Uh, but for absolute max performance under a load, getting the best light, these Tenergies are awesome. And if you leave these sitting around for months and months and months and come back and pick up your light, they're still going to be charged. Now, if you want to convert to lithium ion, you don't have to, but if you want to, here's how you do that. I have two kits. A basic fundamental you absolutely must understand is, is battery voltage. Uh, this is a 26650. It's a lithium ion and it says 3.7 volts. Okay, one of these is equal to three of these. And that's whether that's three of the nickel metal hydride or three alkaline. So you replace three of these with one of these. Um, in the case of the Firefly bulbs, the 370 or the 800 lumen, it's a 3 to 6D cell, so you could use one or two of these. On the 2000 and 5000 lumen, you must use one of these for the 2000 lumen or two of them for the 5000 lumen. No other combinations will work. I don't care if your mag light is 100 D cells long, you can't just stuff it full of lithium ion batteries and and not blow something up so the way these kits work is i have a sleeve that fits one 26 650 or a sleeve that hat fits two 26 650s both of them say they convert a 2d mag light and i'll show you how to do that first and then we'll get to the bigger ones if you're using the two cell kit you have to remove the anodizing from the tail cap of your mag light and i have a video that shows how to do that it's not that difficult if you have a drill and a wire brush attachment it's very easy if you don't have that it might not be fun for you the single cell kit on the other hand you do not have to make any other modification for the light instead of coming with a short spring that goes down inside your tail cap it you use the regular factory mag light spring and you just snap this button into the tail cap to make contact with your uh narrower 26650 battery now if you want to use the the lithium ion in a longer mag light a 3, 4, 5, 6D, you can still do that. If you wanted to convert your 3D mag to use the 5000 lumen bulb and the 2 cell kit, you just buy the 2D kit and one dummy D. If your mag light was a 4D, you'd buy the 2D kit and two dummy Ds. Just take the dummy D cells and slip them into the mag light body first and then put your sleeve in you still need to use the shorty spring for that two cell kit troubleshooting uh, most of the questions i get about these are actually about what we just covered in the install but there have been a few other things number one if your bulb has like a flicker to it 99 percent of the time that just means that you have a poor or weak connection um, you know if this this head isn't screwed down all the way like it, it's loose like that, it could give you that. Or if your tail cap's not on all the way, um, if you have corrosion on your batteries, that could also uh, affect it. Uh, if you're getting zero light, nothing at all, uh, same, same things. It could be from the install. Usually what I find if people are getting no light, there's two of the very most common things. It almost always has to do with the lithium ion kits. Number one is what what batteries are you using? 26650s are flat right here, and a lot of them do not make contact 
end to end. So uh, my advice is buy the key power protected 2650s because they will make electrical contact together. Uh, if you have those and uh, you're still not getting any light at all, I always tell people to check the tail cap. Um, make sure that the shorty spring you installed is sitting all the way down at the very bottom, not up here where the factory spring sat, but all the way at the bottom. And, and even if it looks like you did a good job removing the anodizing, it, it may not be making electrical contact there. So going over that again or stuffing the spring down there with a screwdriver. I've even taken that off with my lathe a couple of times and had that happen. Like I looked down in there and it looks okay, but, but no, it was sitting up, spring was sitting up high or something. If you've checked those things and you really think it's your bulb, um, I do have another troubleshooting video. It's called the jumper wire trick. You could know absolutely for sure then if your bulb is working. Most of the time, I mean, I, I, there's always a chance there could be a problem with your bulb. I'll, I mean, I have no problem saying that. There's always a chance, even with my products, even with my products, <laughs> that, that if something could be wrong, but I test every single one of them before we ever ship any that, you know, they don't just get put together and sent out. So it's pretty rare that the, the, there's actually something wrong with that. It's usually a connection issue. Finally, um, the bulb won't stay on, on high. If you get, if your bulb will turn on, on high, and then you get a whole bunch of rapid, fast step downs, and then you're in super low, that is the low voltage protection circuit being triggered. And e even if you have uh, relatively new batteries, whatever, this, this could happen. It, it's extremely high power. You know, this only happens with the 5,000 or 2,000, you know. Uh, but if it won't stay on high like that, what's happening is your batteries cannot carry the load that's required. And so the low voltage protection kicks in. This usually only happens if you're using alkaline batteries or uh, another thing like alkaline batteries wear out pretty quick. So remember, you're only going to get probably 20 minutes out of a new set of those anyway. So, you know, if you have batteries with 15 minutes time on them, you know, and then that happens, <laughs> you know, or if all your batteries are brand new and you happen to get one out of the package that was weak, you're basically running on five cells. That would also happen. If you're using lithium ion batteries and that happens, it could be that one of the protection circuits on them is getting triggered or, or you have a weak cell. Uh, a weak connection is possible. But basically, if you get that high mode and then those rapid step downs, it's a battery issue. Super thanks for watching, everybody, and good lucks.